Welcome to the Initiative One podcast. We are delighted that you have chosen to give part of your valuable time to us and to listen and to be inspired uh, and to receive that hopefully in a way that your day will be a lot better because of um, the encouragement that you receive from our podcast. I want to welcome to you one of the newest members of the Initiative One team, but she certainly is not new to the realm of professional leadership. I want to introduce to you Dr. Angela Peters. Uh, She is our newest uh, executive leader. She is vice president in charge of research and practice. Um, You're going to hear some pretty cool things that she has been doing. She recently joined us after a stint as provost at a university in Georgia, and then she was offered a uh, executive position at a university in South Carolina. And we are so thrilled that for some crazy reason, you turned that down to come and join our team. I want to know why you did that. Um, and Angela, um, I want to I want this audience to know about your passion and especially your work around uh, the Ladies Club, uh, you and Stephen's work also with the, with the Gentlemen's Club and how you have graciously brought that in-house to Initiative One. So welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very kind comments. Well, they're sincere and they're accurate. Thank you. We love you guys. Um, so my, back, my story is that I have been in higher education probably for almost 30 years, starting when I was 10 plus yeah, 30. Yeah, I was going to say there 10. Go. There, there you go. You, there you go. Um, probably about 30 years. Um, but my passion has always been in science, always been in teaching and mentoring. Um, and so I received my um, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and then went back to receive my doctorate degree in science in chemistry and biochemistry. Um, but throughout that process, I found myself always being um, a mentor, uh, being some type of influencer, um, being in a circle of folks where I actually, uh, only by the grace of God, empowered them to be at their best. And so I took that and ran with it. And that is who I am, and that is what I like about Initiative One. Um, uh, my husband came to me in, uh, in February and said that God told me that this is going to be our last semester here in Georgia, uh, that you need to go and talk to your president because we're going back home. We're going to go back home, we're going to take care of family, and we're going to wait for our next assignment. Now, a couple things happened. Had God told you that yet? There you go. God (laughs) didn't tell me that, but I had trust enough trust in my husband to know that he knew what he was talking about. And so we took that leap of faith. Uh, At the same time, audience, I was taking these courses. Now, audience, I am a full professor of chemistry and biochemistry. I'm a provost at uh, the largest historically black college and university in the state of Georgia. And here I am putting myself in, in a seat to be a student. Okay, how humbling can that be at my age of whatever you think my age is? And so our instructor for a leadership transformation process was Dr. Fred Johnson. Uh, And when we took this leap of faith, um, at the same time I was a student of Dr. Fred Johnson's, we were in a cohort with other students who were superintendents, who um, who were directors, and so on and so forth. From that process, I was able to determine what my next assignment was gonna be. And my next assignment was going to be where I am today. And that is being a part of an organization that practices what they preach. Being a part of an organization where I can be creative, that I can be collaborative, and that I can bring my best and help others to be their best. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in education. It can be in business. It can be in um, 
in, uh, in, in industry. Uh, it can be with gentlemen's clubs and ladies' clubs. And so I'm actually able to, through with Initiative One in my new um, position, I'm actually able to take all of my life's experiences, my background, everything that I know, bring it to the table and provide those same opportunities for just a plethora of audiences. And that is why I'm here. Mm. And um, this is our second time being here in Green Bay. Um, audience, I am from I'm a Southern Girl. I have traveled the world. Uh, when you think of Green Bay, you think of a couple things. When I thought of Green Bay, I thought of two things: cheese and snow. But well, are, what about the Packers? We are. And, oh yeah. See, I, my husband's a, um, a a sports guy. So and three things in the Packers. Yes. <laughs> but we are here in June in Green Bay, and it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful city. And so I'm excited about being here. Uh, audience, we are actually going to have an inaugural I1 conference. It is going to be here in the beautiful city of Green Bay. And you are leading and building the conference. Yes, I am. And I'm so excited. And we're going to bring the conference here to the beautiful city of Green Bay. But that's why I'm here. Stephen and I took a leap of faith, did not know what our next assignment was going to be. Lo and behold, my next assignment was right in front of me. Mm. And that was through the leadership transformation process so it's it's an honor to be here you know um to share a little bit with you um one of our weaknesses um as a company i um when i was in college um i played college basketball i was the only white player on our basketball team and i roomed for four years um, with 12 African-American friends. And I, they taught me so much. And, and so being with people of color uh, is, has always been such an enriching, rewarding experience. And yet being here in Green Bay, moving here to Green Bay and starting a company, Green Bay is 98% white. Mm -hmm. And and for years, I said, one of our, we can't be going into urban environments yeah. um, or rural environments, especially in the South, and they look on our website, we're a bunch of white folks. Right. And and yet trying to, um, to mentor folks in, in a culture that is their own. Mm -hmm. And so for a long time, I kept trying to push a door open. By golly, we're going to build diversity. We are going to build diversity. And, and, and yet, uh, I wasn't successful. Mm -hmm. And yet I had made that commitment. And, and what is called the law of attraction, I just finally said, look, I've made a commitment. And and we cannot be the greatest organization making the deepest impact without the diversity and the richness that diverse cultures and diverse people bring. And I, I, kind of, I just relaxed about it. And lo and behold, um, Stephen came into our lives. And then you came into our lives. And then you all brought Margaret, Margaret. Gilmore into our lives. Right. And, and, and um, you know, when you commit to something, to becoming something, it's amazing how people who are already there, what you have mm -hmm. committed to, begin to come into your life. Mm -hmm. How did that affect you? Absolutely. And you know what? Your, your commitment to diversity was admirable. And, it, and we respected it, and that is why we are here. So your commitment to diversity was there because you had diversity of thought, you had diversity of experience already here at I1, which is what we absolutely love. What you needed was the diversity of race. Yes, right? yes. But you had other elements of yes. diversity, you had other elements of inclusion. If you did not, then we wouldn't have been attracted to you. Mm. And Margaret wouldn't have been attracted to you. Mm. And so it was an opportunity for us to come in as professionals to a company that wanted to build diversity, but you were already there. Mm. So you had so many elements, you just didn't have 
the the race element. Mm. And so now we're building on that, but your plethora of diversity of experiences, diversity of thought, um, you know, I can go on and on and on. So so Awan's commitment to diversity is evident and that is why we're here. Well, and thank so you. and so we we want to continue to build on that. Um, because I think there is, there's, there's always room for growth. Um, and as we go into with gentlemen's clubs and ladies clubs uh, and with the work that, that, um, that Phil and Stephen and the, the team are doing in education, um, students nowadays, especially students who are in um, marginalized communities, uh, underrepresented minority students, love to see role models. Yeah. They love to see folks who look like them. And so I one's commitment to diversity is admirable. We have a lot of growth in, and that's what we're here to do. So you know, Angela, we're also committed to becoming a source of encouragement, guidance, and hope for, for women leaders. Um, and uh, as, a, as a woman who has been a pioneer in the form of leadership for for women of color even yeah. um what what have you where is your what's different what why is why is being i i hate to say woman leader because it's almost a a, a leader who is also a woman right what what are the challenges that you have mm -hmm. faced that we're going to address here together over time here? So challenges and how we're going to address it. It's lonely at the top. Um, for many women who are CEOs, who are executives, um, they're here and they wish that they had those affinity groups. They wish that they had those folks that they could connect to. They wish that they had those support groups. And they don't know who they can trust. Um, and so in working with our new CEO, Tracy, who just happens to be your beautiful wife, um, in working with our new CEO here at I1 and all of the other women who are here, Regina, Margaret, and so many others, uh, we want to we want to bring that sense of belonging or some type of affinity group to women executives through women exe women's forums, uh, through panels, and so on and so forth. But we want I want to to be the the place where that happens, so that women can see, can come to I one uh, to get the support that they want. Um, and let me back up. You always talk, and you talked this morning about the, the two major elements of Initiative One, uh, being promoting best practices and promoting um, research that's academic-based. Um, the data shows, correct me if I'm wrong, the data shows that, that many of our clients or partners um, have so many female leaders, right? So a lot of I1's partners are female leaders. I'm not sure what the majority is. It could be over 50%. And so I want I want to be a place where those female executives can have that sense of belonging, can come and share uh, best practices, um, and then they can feel as though they trust us. So we're going to build that. We're going to develop that. Um, but for me as a female executive, I've always had my husband who is a big time whatever, everything that he does. And so I've always been able to fall back on him and say, hey, Stephen, what do you think about this? Hey, what do you think about that? So as he has been executive coaching folks, as he's been executive coaching superintendents and so on and so forth, I also had him executive coaching me, but he didn't know he was doing it. <laughs> um, but a lot of other women don't have that. And so I think now uh, in my role and working with the CEO, it's an opportunity for us to bring that type of support and sense of belonging uh, to our current clients and prospective clients. So I want to, I'm kind of putting you on the spot and we have not rehearsed this at all. So you didn't know what was coming. Um, what would you say based on your experience are one or two of the most important keys for a for women leaders that are still 
building their presence in what has been a male dominated mm-hmm. area, what would you say to women leaders that will keep them in the game, that will keep their presence expanding and will allow them to be successful in the long haul? Mm, I would say um, keep integrity at the forefront. forefront. What do you mean by that? Um, stay true to yourself. Um, be honest. Well, as a, as a female leader or a leader, outstanding leader who is a female, how have you been tested in your career in your integrity and not being true to yourself? Mm, how much time do we have? Uh, but, <laughs> well, I'm sure you've got some examples and some stories that are really embedded deep into your heart. Absolutely. Stories where it's a matter of student success, which, which is at the top, or policy. Yeah. All right? And so when you're in, when you're a female or any leader, and you're in a position where you, um, where you have to make the hard decisions, um, and I'm a science person, I'm a data person, and in higher ed, I had to go back to precedence, had to go back to policy, I had to go back to protocol. And when that is not aligned with student success, then that's where I think your integrity comes in. So I had to make some hard calls that I did not like at that time, but it was in the best interest of the institution. It was in the best interest of federal and state mandates. It might not have been in the best interest of that um, uh, student, that um, underrepresented minority student who uh, did not have the funds to continue to um, continue their education, but policy dictated something else and I had to make a hard call. And so I think as a leader, you had, have to determine um, and you have to know uh, the system and you have to know how to deliver your best to the system or you are going to put the system and your institution or your organization uh, in a bad light. And so what I did was, in making that call, where I had student success and I had policy and protocol and federal and state mandates, I went with what was best for the institution, and then I came around the back and, and had another sidebar with the student found some other funding mm. opportunities for the student mm. to keep them in school. So we deal with a lot of, um, of manufacturing companies that have been primarily male-dominated um, fields. And women are beginning to break into senior leadership positions. And, and we often hear stories such as there, this subtle but not so subtle message, know your place, you are being given a gift to even be here at the table, so you better play the game the way we want you to play the game. Have you ever seen that, experienced that? I have seen it and I have never experienced it. I have seen it, I have heard about it, and I know women that that has happened to, but I have never experienced it only by the grace of God. I am. I have been in situations where I was the first, the only. Uh, I was department chair of chemistry years ago, the only American, the only African American, and the only women. I had about 10 uh, international males. Um, so I've always been in a position where I have been the first of something. Um, but I walked in the room with confidence and with grace and shoulders back, neck up, head up, as if I owned the room. If I walked in the room and I went blank and I knew nothing and I didn't know what was gonna come out of my mouth, I knew nothing about the subject, you know, knew nothing about the questions that were gonna be asked, you never know it. So you jumped on me on one of my classes when I told you that (laughs) in a situation that I was in that I did not want them to see me sweat. Never let them see me sweat. Your response is, let them see you sweat, Yeah. all right? So you walk in the room as you own it and, and you have, 
women have a right to be there. Yes. We have earned that right to be there. It's ours. Go take it. And so here at I1, we're going to we're going to provide the support and the opportunity to vent, the opportunity to talk um, so that they can walk in that room and own it. So let me give you another scenario. I, uh, I remember a friend of mine. Um, you know, I was a pastor for many years, and and women leadership, um, uh, fortunately, has become much stronger. But um, women in the field of, of the church and theology had even bigger barriers to climb. And I remember uh, a friend of mine, she was so, uh, understandably, she was so angry. Um, and her anger came out every day, especially with males. Um, and I didn't know how to coach her on that because I've never been in her shoes. What, what would you say to someone who has every right to be angry and they are angry and it's affecting their ability to impact their peers? I think we need to take them through the leadership transformation process at <laughs> Initiative One. Um, there's a there's a fine line with with female executives. There's a fine line between um, kindness and aggression. And so I have found um, that in times where you can be perceived as being angry, you can be perceived as being the angry black woman. You know, that, that was out there mm -hmm. uh, with our current vice president as she was um, going through her um, candidacy. You can be perceived as that, but it is a fine line between, um, between your kindness and between um, being too aggressive or being not aggressive, not being aggressive enough. Um, so for that um, young lady, I would say that it's an opportunity to talk to her about harnessing those skills and, um, and harnessing um, her anger and her rage so that it can be used effectively to but move the needle. But not accommodating. Correct, correct. Um, it, it, some organizations thrive off of that type of leadership. Uh, some, I mean, I'm not saying that it's effective or not, um, but if the woman thinks that it is a problem, and that it is a barrier to progression, then we need to have a conversation about it. Yes. Right. But if it has not, but if that style has not been a barrier to progression, um, who are we to squash it? Yeah. But if she is articulating that this might be something that I need help on because I'm not seeing the needle move, um, then it's probably a conversation, leadership transformation, something like that. It's not one size fits all, is it? Oh, no, no. It's not one size fits all. Uh, and it's what's best for the company and what's best for the organization and what's best for you as a leader. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Stephen talks about uh, every level of leadership requires a different version of the leader. And, and every organization requires a different version of the leader. And so the type of leader that Tracy is here as CEO at Initiative One might not be the type of leader that's needed in another organization um you know angela um we often we hear all the time oh okay here we go you all are yeah I, i've done this before and and you all leadership companies and they're all the same come on any what's been as we begin to wrap it down what's been your experience and and not from a sales perspective or you know just from your heart what has been the impact uh, so I have I have taken advantage of many leadership uh, I'm gonna say programs um, I had a um, years ago I went through a, a leadership opportunity that was a year long we Went to very, flew into Atlanta, flew here, flew here, flew there with different cohorts. Um, I've done the 360s. I've, I've done many of them uh, in preparation for, for my life experiences and to prepare me to be an effective leader. Initiative One, and the reason that I'm here, is Initiative One is a process 
that looks inward, all right? And so no longer are we pointing at you, at you, at you. We're looking at you, yourself. Um, the Initiative One process is not, is not going to be an easy process. If it were easy, then it would be fly by night, you'd forget about it, you wouldn't see the organizational performance that you need to see. It's a challenging process because it cuts deep into the core of who you are. This uh, young man cut deep into who are you, Angela? Why are you here, Angela? What is your purpose, Angela? And once I realized that, then I knew what my next assignment is going to be in life. Isn't it amazing when you know your purpose, decisiveness begins to grow? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Not reactionary, but informed decisiveness. And you have to know your purpose. I mean, you have to know your why. In higher education, um, you know, we talk about that. We talk about our mission statement, our, our vision statement, uh, why we exist, um, because we have to be able to articulate that to recruit students. Um, but in leadership, you have to know who you are. Um, you have to know your goals. You have to know your, your ones and twos. Um, and if you are not confident and sure of who you are inside, then how are you going to know what your ones and twos are? How are you going to know what your, your strategic priorities are? How are you even going to lead? How are you going to even expect to get any followers? And that is what I learned through this I1 process, and that is why I'm here, so that we can bring more, more folks into the fold mm. so that they can learn their why. What's your why? What's your two-word purpose? My two-word purpose in my why is to influence and to empower. Influence and empower. And that is what I have done all of my life. Young lady, young girl, mm. on up. Influence and empower. When you meet my former students, when you meet my former colleagues, they will tell you how I have influenced them to blank. Mm. I have empowered them to blank. Mm. Margaret Gilmore, our new um, consultant, her assistant superintendent was my former student. Wow. And he is doing well, and he tells Margaret that I was a part of that. So my life's journey has been about influence, influencing and empowering. And mine is about accelerating change. And that you do quite well. And we make, may, that's not a slogan for us, and it's not something on a plaque. We make major, courageous decisions using our purpose statement as the first filter. And I am so glad that your filter system led you to us. Absolutely. Me too. I want to say thank you to our audience for joining us today on the Initiative One podcast. Uh, what a delight to have our honored guest, friend, and teammate, Dr. Angela Peters. I want to encourage you to join us monthly um, in attending our think tanks. Uh, they are complimentary gifts to the leadership community. They are highly inspiring. They are top-notch in content. The energy is off the charts. We often have as many as a thousand people attending that, and it's our gift to the leadership community. Go online at initiative1.com and register for our think tanks. Check us out. Um, you'll see the link below. There'll be a lot of opportunity for you to get to know us. Uh, we hope that you will become part of the Initiative One family. Have a great week. Angela, again, I want to say thank you for joining us. My it's pleasure. been our pleasure. Thank you. Take care, you all.